Hello, this is Jack from tofluency.com and welcome to this English lesson where I'm going to talk about how to read books in English so that you learn the type of English that people use. To help me with this, I want to talk about a student I used to have, okay? Let's call this student Mark. Mark was from Ukraine. Now, who's from Russia? So, anyway, Mark spoke in a way that I've never really heard before. That was really different. And I'm going to tell you the reason why he spoke in this way. He had a teacher who used a similar method to what I use, where you get sentences, you repeat those sentences, and therefore you internalize vocabulary, the grammar, and also if you do it with audio, how to say it. However, this teacher got their materials and sentences from 19th century novels and also by translating Russian expressions word for word into English. At times it was magical. This student, Mark, used these expressions which, after thinking about them, made sense. Or using this kind of vocabulary which and, and words and phrases which you only hear in, you know, TV shows adapted from the 19th century. But at other times it was very confusing. And he wasn't able to express himself in a simple way. And one thing I want to say at this point is that students sometimes can get a little bit preoccupied or obsessed with learning advanced English. So they'll learn some kind of, you know, expression that seems advanced, but they'll try to use it all the time to impress people. When using a, a simple sentence, something that you learn in, you know, beginner's English, where it's better for that situation. But I don't think this student was trying to do that too much. It's just that he internalized 19th century English that was written in novels and Russian expressions that were translated word for word. I was thinking about this student the other day and it got me thinking about reading in English and the type of books that we can read to better understand English and also to better understand and to learn the types of vocabulary, words and phrases and grammar that English speakers use in everyday conversation. And this morning, somebody, Molly, who's been following to Fluency for a long time, Mention graded readers. Now, if you don't know what a graded reader is, it's a book that has taken a novel and adapted it to a certain level of English. So you can get, for example, I remember using um, The Gladiator, The Gladiator book, but it was adapted to an intermediate level of English so that I could use it in my class. And it also had different activities in there too. But in addition to this benefit of getting a book that you can enjoy, a book that isn't too difficult, it's also a way for you to learn the type of English that people use. Because these graded readers, and I've been checking them out, they use everyday English compared to novel English, compared to, you know, poetic English. And I've got a few examples from a 19th century novel called Pride and Prejudice, that highlight this for you. What I did is I took the first chapter of the original novel and also the first chapter of The Graded Reader. And I'll leave links to both in the description, but here is the first example. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Here is the adapted version. It is of course generally accepted that a wealthy single man must be in search of a wife. So instead of must be in want of a wife, we have must be in search of a wife. Let's have a look at another example. That he came down on Monday in a chase and four to see the place. Now, I don't know what a chase and four is. It's probably something to do with a carriage, a horse carriage, but this isn't used these days. It's not relevant for people to know this word these days. But what can happen is, um, if you're reading a book and you look at this and you say, what's a chasing for? You look it, look it up and then you think, oh, I need to use this because it's advanced English. Or you look it up and you learn what it means and then you try to use it in a different way. 
it can get kind of confusing. The adapted version, which I really like, that he came down on Monday to see the place. So we didn't need to know what he came down in on Monday. Another example, that the experience of three and 20 years had been insufficient to make his wife understand his character. The adapted version, that the experience of 23 years had not been long enough to make his wife understand his character. So I feel that graded readers are a great way for you to enjoy a story in English while using English that people use these days and also being able to understand the majority of what is being said. Now, you might want to get a graded reader that is above your level to challenge yourself and to learn lots of new words and phrases. But just reading as well is going to help you. It's this repetition of words and phrases used in different contexts that allow you to understand what they mean in a general sense. Also, the more words and phrases you use in sentences or read in sentences, the better you'll be able to understand grammar too. So you can read easy books and still improve your English. It's not always about learning new words and phrases. Additionally, get books that come with audio versions too. Because, as you know, English is not a phonetic language, so you can't just read a word and know how this word is pronounced. Instead, you have to hear it to really know how to say it. And also, listening is great. Listening, l listen more. Always be listening, that's what I say, always be listening. With all that in mind, please share your favorite book in English. And also share your reading strategies. Do you like to do intensive reading? Do you like to do extensive reading? Do you like to listen to audiobooks? And if you want to learn more about reading in English, watch this video here. And if you want to learn more about my program, click over here. So thank you so much for watching. I'll speak to you soon.